you very much. We need to talk. We've been hearing about companies touting their machine learning and AI on our phones and laptops a lot lately, especially over the last few years. But I feel like most people don't really know what it does on their devices. And the truth is, is that it does a lot. So in this Decoder episode, my explainer series here on the channel, I wanted to show you guys some of the things that I thought were super interesting that AI is doing on our devices right now and how it actually makes a difference in your daily life. And if you're wondering why I'm not in New York City right now, I'm actually very far from that. I'm in Hawaii. I'm here for Qualcomm, one of the largest chipset makers in the world's annual Snapdragon Summit, where they talk about their latest chipsets that they're releasing that will most likely be powering the flagship devices you end up owning. And so I partnered with them to help make this video because they actually have some pretty cool AI-based technologies that are launching here and some cool demos to go along with it that we'll take a look at later. It's snowing in New York right now. These tech companies get real good at picking places for their conventions, not gonna lie. But let's talk real quick about what's probably the most apparent place that you see AI on your device, and that's the camera. The color science or the look of a photo, the sharpening, the contrast, white balance, all of what makes your photos look as good as they do from the much smaller sensors in them all comes down to AI. The algorithms in the phones are trained using tons of edited images to teach itself what a good photo should look like and make those adjustments instantly. Qualcomm even just announced a partnership with Leica, the famous German camera company, to add their specifically designed Lights Looks color science that was trained off of photos from the Leica M10 camera and running that AI model directly on the device. And so manufacturers that have launched phones with the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset that they just launched will be able to adjust the images to mimic using a very expensive Leica a camera now. And it's not just as simple as adding just contrast across the entire photo. Nowadays, the phones are actually running multiple AI models at once. As soon as you point your camera at something, before you even take a photo, things like face recognition help it decide what to focus on and what colors to make everything in the image, even check for your posture to know what is you versus the background so that they now can take multiple photos at the same time, exposing for both you and the background and then combine them together and a ton of other things as well. And they can also use that same data to create portrait mode photos and even videos where the background is blurred out while the subject is in focus. Qualcomm even showed us during their event how their new Snapdragon 8 chipset with its dedicated 7th gen AI engine is able to do all of this four times faster than on the previous Snapdragon 888 chipset. And on top of that, they managed to get a 70% increase in performance per watt. So faster, but also using less battery, which is always welcome. And it's not just about photos and videos. Something that Qualcomm did show us that I thought was super interesting was the fact that their new Snapdragon 8 chipset has a fourth ISP. So they have three for the normal cameras on the back that we're kind of used to now, but they now have a fourth one that can power a low resolution camera that can be on all the time. Now the idea with this is think of instantly scanning QR codes without even having to turn on the phone screen. Something I actually kind of want now thanks to a ton of New York restaurants switching to QR codes for their menus because of COVID, but also face unlock without touching the phone. But even more clever things, like if that camera detects that there is more than one face looking at the phone's screen at the same time, it'll silence notifications automatically. And that way they don't see anything that you didn't want them to see. I have found an island kitty on the hunt for shellfish, maybe. Good luck, kitty. And next, we have the very complicated matter that is voice. All of the AI assistants that we're so used to talking to at this point are all rigorously trained on natural language processing models. So whether it's Google Assistant trying to determine what you are asking it, or even you just dictating what you're saying to your phone to turn it into text, also translating text, it's all a ton of AI based on listening to how people talk. Even things that are very commonplace nowadays, like video calls, are able to use AI models to actually recognize sounds that are not your voice in real time and remove them instantly. Qualcomm even showed off their new Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 3 chipset for Windows computers, doing a pretty impressive job of just that. Great baby, great baby. 
Also, companies like Sond even have AI models that you can talk to their app and it detects your stress levels based on your voice, but even detect asthma or other respiratory issues like COVID. And it isn't just you talking that uses AI on your devices. Companies like Hugging Face can use language on the screen of the phone. They can scan articles or documents and then respond to natural language questions about the information and retrieve answers. And Qualcomm talked about how they actually worked with both of those partners to put their algorithms on the new Snapdragon 8 chipset directly. So this way it's faster, it's more efficient battery wise, and also it's more secure because the data never has to leave the chipset or the device at all. So gaming also has a big boost from AI. Mobile devices can now use AI to know what pixels are on the screen and increase the resolution. But also they can do tone mapping to make the game not just sharper, but also better contrast color. And finally, even your cell phone reception is improved by AI. There are a ton of antenna in your device that send and receive data from cell towers, and that's how you get signal. But AI can now tell the device where your hand is and even where it's going to be, and then turn on and off specific antennas to make sure that they get the best reception possible. And because they don't all need to be on at once, it even saves battery in the process. And there you go. So bottom line, AI is in a ton of things on your devices. But the truth is that good AI should do all of these things and you not really know that it's doing them. But there you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of the video. And again, shout out to Qualcomm for partnering with me to make this video. You can click the link below to learn more and look out for commercial devices with Snapdragon 8 early next year. As always though, regardless guys, Thanks for watching. Go away.